Good morning, church. I too would like to welcome you to church this morning and appreciate you joining us, whether you're joining us in person or online. I would like to welcome you here and thank you for joining us and trust that God will speak to your hearts this morning. What a privilege, what a joy uh, to, to be able to meet together, to connect together in this way. Let's pray before I begin this morning. And Lord God and loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you that you are present here with us. We thank you that you uh, provide us with love, with life, through your Son, Jesus. And God, as we get into your word this morning and look at the aspect of two are better than one, Father, would you teach us the reality of what that means and what it could look like and what it should look like uh, in our lives. So Father, we just commit this time to you. Thank you that you will teach us this morning. We pray these things in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Most people, they want to belong to something. They want to feel a part of something. And maybe that's where you've been as well. Maybe you want to have find meaning and purpose in your life. Maybe you feel uh, like you just, you just want to belong. But sometimes, I think sometimes some of us, we feel invisible. And maybe you've felt that way. You felt that you are invisible and you want to be in a place where people notice you, where people um, care for you, where people love you and accept you. You just want to walk into a room where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. There's a few people who know where that came from, and so I was just checking uh, to see how many of you know where that came from. But that was one of the shows in the 80s that, that really highlighted this thing, that when they walked into this, this bar, it was a, called Cheers, and the people would walk into the, the, the bar, and there was this one particular guy I always remember. He'd walk into the room, not that I watched a show about a bar, you know, I don't want you to get the wrong impression. That's not true, I, I obviously watched it, but... The guy would walk into the room and everybody would just yell, Norm! And it was, it was that feeling that people want. They want to walk into a room. They want to be noticed. They want to be a part of something. They want to belong. They want to feel like they matter. And many of us, I think, I think we're in that same place where we just want to matter to someone somewhere. Maybe you feel all alone. And sometimes we are all alone. But we can even feel alone when we are surrounded by people. We can feel all alone when we're married or we're single, whether there's people around us or not. And I think the reason that we feel all alone is because we were created for relationship. But often in our culture, in our world, we drift somehow towards isolation. It happens for a lot of different reasons. I mean, I think most of us would, would agree that, yeah, it's hard living in community. It's hard walking together with others. It's, you've been hurt by walking in a community of a, a group of people, whether it's been in school, whether it's been in church. There are times where we get hurt by people. And so we want to isolate ourselves because we don't want to feel that way again. And so we drift towards isolation. There are those on the opposite side of that where they quite enjoy being all alone. They're content. They, they have everything they need. They're, they're self-sufficient. They don't see the need for living in community. And maybe part of it is because, you know, the only person that can disappoint you is you. And, and so for the most part, I, th I think we can try and figure out that, yeah, I'm not, I don't disappoint myself too much. But often we can feel disappointed by others. And so we, we, we tend to be okay not living in community with others. Well, the Bible has a lot to say about the benefits of living in community. And today I want to look to an Old Testament passage that is often used at weddings. And maybe, who knows, I'm doing a wedding this, this Saturday. Maybe, uh, maybe I'll use that for your wedding, you guys. And, uh, no, I, pr I probably won't. That's not where I'm, I'm headed. But this passage has often been used for weddings. And, and, it, and it does apply to weddings, but it wasn't written specifically for weddings. And so I want to turn into the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes. And we'll just read a few verses in, in Ecclesiastes. And Solomon, in these, past, in these verses, he makes a really strong case for the benefits of living in community. 
So in the passage in, in, in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, he goes through three short illustrations to reveal to us, to the people originally who's writing this to, but, but also to us, the benefits of living in community. And so we'll look at these three illustrations this morning, but let's just read Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. And it starts off this way. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls... The one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie together down together, they keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? And if one can overpower him who is alone, two can resist him. A cord of three strands is not quickly torn apart. In verse 8, just before the passage that we're reading today, in verse 8, the author is talking about the journey of someone who has, who has worked extremely hard to achieve uh, the highest level that he decided that he wanted to be, come at. He, this is what success looks like, so he worked hard to get to that point. He, get, he worked hard to get to that top, to the point where he is, whether it was money, fame, or success, that's what he did. But once he got to the top, he realized that along the way, along the way of getting to this place, this position that he thought was the ideal, he realized that he was all alone. And that he had absolutely nobody to share all of this stuff that he had gained. And so he says, all is vanity. It all serves no purpose if you wind up all alone at the end. And then... Solomon goes into the two are better than ones. And Solomon makes a statement of fact when he says that two are better than one in these illustrations. In the first illustration, he begins begins by starting two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Verse 9, two are better than one in a work setting because two people working together can accomplish a whole lot more than one person working alone. Two people bring more skill sets. They add wisdom and insight, added strength. There's more productivity when there's a couple people working on a project together. We benefit from a broader perspective. We gain objectivity by having somebody coming alongside us as well. And when working with someone, they may view things through a slightly different lens than we do. That's extremely beneficial. It's like seeing it from a different point of view, seeing something that we're not seeing, and so there's added benefit to it. You know, it's, it's like, wait a minute. You mean there's another way to look at this? And that's what having somebody walk alongside us adds to it when we're working, instead of working alone. There's a benefit to working together. And then there's the added benefit of getting to know somebody better. You know, when you work alongside somebody for any amount of time, you start to get to know them. You start to have conversations about, you know, what are some of the things that you like? What are some of your dislikes? It goes beyond just a conversation about how will we get this project finished? How will we get things done? There's a building of, 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 of somewhat of a relationship, of a friendship there as we get to know somebody. What... And, and it doesn't take long often and people begin to, to reveal more and more about themselves very quickly when two people are working together. Together, Two are better than one as you have opportunity to learn from other people. And you have opportunity to teach other people as well. You have opportunity to encourage each other, to be encouraged by someone else when you're working side by side. These, this is the benefit that Solomon reveals. Here's, here's, here's number one. Working side by side, working with someone else is a benefit. Two are better than one when working together. And then Solomon moves to the second. Two are better than one illustrations. In verse 10 he says, two are better than one because if either one of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. Notice this, this, the strength of this, this next sentence. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. 
I mean, at times we can see the really practical aspect of when two are better than one, when somebody falls. Yeah, it's, it's nice to have somebody to pick you up. But the principle here is far greater than simply having somebody to pick you up when you fall down physically. There's, there's far more to it. Because if we look at the aspect of when we stumble spiritually, when we're weighed down with emotional burdens or concerns, it's essential to have a friend to, to, who can come alongside us to help bring us to restoration, to, to, to help us in a, the wholeness of our relationship with God. There's such a benefit when we fall spiritually to have somebody walking alongside us who can come alongside and, and pick us up. I remember crossing the street one, one day and uh, we were with, with a bunch of guys from, from Grand West when I worked at Grand West and it was winter time, it was slippery and we were walking across the street, there was three or five of us, I can't remember the number, going to Tim Hortons because that's a good place to, to spend your noon hour and one of the guys slipped and, and he went down on his knee. The guy beside him was right beside him, grabbed his elbow and pulled him up. The guy didn't even fully fall. The benefits of somebody being alongside you. And there's the same benefit included in our spiritual lives. When we stumble, not if, when we stumble, we will stumble. There is somebody there to grab your elbow so you don't hit the concrete, you don't hit the pavement, and you don't fall flat on your face. Because there's times we will fail personally. And we don't get road rash because somebody is there to pick us up. Or maybe the road rash isn't quite as bad because somebody is walking with us. Paul told the Galatians in, in Galatians chapter 6, 1 and 2, he says, Brethren, even if, uh, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, meaning a sin... Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. This is speaking about spiritual restoration. It's not about con condemnation. No, we don't walk beside each other to condemn each other. We walk each other beside each other looking to restore each other when they fall and allowing others to bring restoration to us when we fall. I mean, it's inevitable. We will fall. So who catches us when we fall? Who's there to catch you when you fall? And then Solomon says this, this huge phrase. He says, woe to the one who has no one to pick them up. You know, take notice. Take this seriously. This is detrimental. If you don't have anyone that is there to pick you up when you fall down, it's going to be harsh. So take notice. It's dangerous to be alone and have no one to pick you up. If you fall spiritually, who's there to hold you to account? To build you up. To get you back on the right track. So he's telling us the benefits of having somebody to walk with when we fall. And then thirdly, he says this, if two lie down together, they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? <laughs> Should have talked to Pastor Dan about this because I really would have liked to say something a little bit more, but I won't. You'll have to ask Pastor Dan about this story, but if you've ever spent a night out in the freezing elements, you know that two are better than one. Like, like just ask Dan, just do it. And um, <laughs> you, you, if, if you've ever spent a night out in the elements, you will know that two are better than one. And this isn't speaking about relationship. This isn't speaking about a husband and wife necessarily. It is a speaking about two people that when you're outside, when you're anywhere, you feel the coldness of the elements and, and the closeness, the warmth that two can have uh, because they use each other's, these, each other's heat is so important. But the truth goes deeper than just keeping us physically warm. We know that aspect that, yes, if you, if you come together, there will be the, the heat of, uh, of two people will be greater than just the one. And the truth grows so much deeper than just your wife stealing your blanket all the time. You know, it's, it's much more than that. Or you stealing your wife's blanket. The truth is much deeper than that. When you're exposed to the elements of this life, it leaves you vulnerable. 
It leaves you in need of comfort. It needs, you've been emotionally or spiritually, there's a coldness that is blowing over you, that's coming in. I mean, when you're exposed to criticisms, the harshness of others, you do need someone to come alongside you, to support you, to encourage you when you're vulnerable. Those are the times it's so important to have somebody on your side, somebody that you trust and that you walk with to build into your lives, but also for you to be able to build into somebody else's life, to provide the warmth that they need. I mean, any time that you and I are going through a situation where we feel helpless and we don't know how we're going to make it through, it's a situation where we could use a friend. It's a situation where we could use somebody that, to come alongside us. I mean, maybe it's starting a new job, starting a new school, you know, moving into a new community. And you don't know how you're going to fit in. And you could you really use a, a family friend or, or a face, you know, you know, a familiar face in some of these situations. Maybe you're going to the doctor for an appointment and you've had some indication that there's going to be bad news. I mean, the warmth from someone else is extremely important when we go through the hard situations in our lives. There is comfort when we don't have to walk alone through the difficulties in our lives. There's a sense of warmth when there are people around us. When you suffer for whatever reason, maybe the loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, the, the loss of a... There's so many different things, but two are better than one. And so Solomon, he shares these, these benefits of the two are better than one illustrations. And then he introduces... A third. There's such a benefit to two people. Two are better than the one. Why? For the reason of two can work better together. They can accomplish more. Two can, two can keep each other warm. Somebody can pick you up when you fall. And then he says, two are better th than one. But here, come with me. Stay with me. Adding a third will even increase the strength of what I've just mentioned. There is strength in number. There is strength in doing things in community. There is strength in doing things with other people. A cord of three strands is stronger and harder to bring down and defeat or hurt or conquer someone. We need Christians, Christian friends for emotional support, practical and spiritual support and encouragement through life's hardships. And maybe you feel that, you know, I, I don't really have that many hardships. I haven't gone through that many hardships. Well, you will. But there's also the added part of how can I speak into somebody's life? The things that I've lived through, the experiences that I've gone through, I have opportunity to speak into somebody's life as well. To help people stay on track. Lift us up when we fall. In the early days of the church in Acts, disciples of Jesus worshipped together at the temple daily. They met in homes, they ate together, they had the Lord's Supper together, and they shared their meals with great joy and generosity. And the church grew. Life and community was seen as so incredibly rich because it produced joy and unity and fellowship. And it was appealing to those outside this community of Jesus followers, outside of the community of disciples of Jesus. If you remember last week, I mentioned that the people, if they saw somebody who was hungry, the people in this church in Acts, if they saw somebody that was hungry, what did they do? They would fast for a few days so that they could give, instead of consuming their food, they could give it to somebody else. I mean, that's 
That's picking somebody up when they fall. That's two are better than ones in its greatest example. To feed somebody when they're hungry. That's warmth when somebody is in need. Now, we might hear these things and and acknowledge that, yeah, it sounds good. When we look at the church in Acts, it sounds good. It sounds appealing. I mean, it worked for them, right? But it doesn't work for us now. Because it's just really weird to live like that. It's really weird to interact with people on that kind of a level because we live in this society that is all about individual, individuality. We want to be alone. We want to have our time. And I get that. I really get that. But we can miss out if we don't come together and live in community with people who are like-minded, who are people that are on the same journey that we are. And often it's only when crises arise or we become overwhelmed by the pressures of life or even over, maybe come overrun with sin in our lives, do we ever recognize that we need help from others? It's usually when we hit the bottom. And often by the time we recognize we need help, then we believe that we've gone too far and it's hopeless. We're all alone. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you not to wait until you find your place, yourself in a place where you're in desperate need. When you're at the bottom, at the end of yourself, and you don't even know how you're going to make it into tomorrow. I want you to encourage you not to wait till you get to that point where you need somebody to speak into your life that badly, because often we won't take the time at that point. And even when we're in crisis, even when we're at the point of brokenness, it's often difficult to find someone that we can trust, someone that we know can relate to us. And so we try to do it alone. And Solomon says, two are better than one. Don't wait till you're in the valley. Because often everything is going really good until it's not. And then what? It's here completely broken and hurting. That your phone, that Google won't be able to help you out. It's here at Broken where the video game won't bring you comfort or whatever it is that you do in the aloneness of your time. So in light of the inevitable being that we will fall, we will fail, We will fall into sin. Don't delay. Don't wait until that point. Get into the habit of intentionally getting to know others and be known so that you will have somebody to be the two or better than one. And when you go through those valleys, when you have the companion, when you're walking in community with people, the bottom isn't quite as low and it's definitely not as lonely if we allow people to walk with us in and through that. But not only are the two then better than ones good for the crisis, 
It's better to celebrate life's accomplishments with somebody, to, to share the joys and the victories with somebody. Do you remember in verse 8, we talked about the, 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 the guy that he's, he's gotten to the top and he's all alone. Can you imagine what it's be like to do life with someone and there's someone to share your joys and your victories to celebrate those things? To celebrate those, those life milestones, those birthdays, those anniversaries, those kids' sports games, you know, whatever it is, to do it in community with somebody else and to be able to celebrate not only with them, but they with you. It's so much more fulfilling walking together, doing life together in community. In Acts chapter 2, we see the church is it's exploding. As people did life together, they had one thing in common, and it was Jesus. They lived their lives to serve Jesus. They were surrendered in their lives to Jesus. They were obedient to Jesus. And their lives, the only thing that, that, that was important to them was making Jesus famous. How do we do that in the light of the community? That was what was on their heart and their mind. And the way they lived it out was evidenced by the people coming and joining the church. They were things that, they did things that were radical in its time absolutely counter to what culture was doing. They were turning the world upside down for Jesus. Now, if we look at that, you're saying, yeah, that's too radical. That's not me. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying sell everything. Now, Jesus might be saying that to you. I'm not. <laughs> you deal with Jesus. <laughs> but I'm not saying sell everything that you have. But imagine... What it would be like if we lived in this kind of a community, that when we sat down for a meal, when we sat down for, to go through the scriptures and we didn't understand something in the scripture, we had somebody that we trusted enough to be able to discern God's word and share that with us, to speak into somebody else's life, to have somebody speaking into our life, to find meaning and purpose in life and to be able to share that meaning and purpose with others who are on the same mission that you are on. We're all on the same mission. Fix your eyes on Jesus. And his mission is make more disciples. We talked about that last week, what that looked like. And as followers of Jesus, we find meaning and purpose in doing the will of the Father with others. But not just any community is okay. It's important that we're in the right community. I mean, if you're a, if you're a Chevy fan, which if you're a believer, you probably should be. Uh, <laughs> sorry. If you were in a Chevy, you know, if you're a Chevy fan and you're in a, in a Ford club, you're not in the same, you're not going in the same way. You're, you're not going to have the same things in common. Now, if you're a Chevy guy and you're in a Chevy club and you're a Ford guy and you're in a Ford club, you guys are headed in the same direction. And the same is true when you are following Jesus. If you're not in the, within the right people, within the right community, you will, it will not build you up. It will do the opposite, in fact. It will tear you down. Because there are certain people that tear you down and not build you up. There are certain people that will, will hurt you. And so it's important to be in the right community. And I believe that right community is the body of believers. As a, child of, uh, as, a, as a child of God, that's where we as believers need to be, in the community of the church. And I'm, like Simon said earlier, it's not about the building. It's about being together with other disciples of Jesus. Now, I know it's hard to connect for all of us here. It's hard for us to connect and make meaningful relationships that people will be able to walk with us. And that's why Simon mentioned earlier too, life groups. And I believe life groups are so important to building a small community to where you can be known 
and know others. Where you can walk with people, where people can speak into your life, where people can build you up. I believe that can happen in the community of the life group. And it's not going to happen overnight. It, it takes time as you, as you get to know each other, as you eat together, as you, fool, you know, do, do crazy things together. Maybe you, maybe you go, I don't know, skiing together. Maybe you go on vacation. I, I don't know what it is that you might do together, but there's times where you hang around together. You, you watch a football game together or w- whatever it is. You fellowship together. You serve together. And this is where you begin to, to get to know each other to the point where you're able to lean on each other for comfort, support, for encouragement encouragement. The two are better than ones. The pick me up when I fall. And so where does that leave you today if you're sitting here wondering, I'm all alone. I don't have somebody to do community with. Maybe you're in the place where you are struggling and you would like somebody to help you, to pick you up. And I know we talk about this series is about habits, building small habits that will have big results. Now, last week and this week's sermons probably don't look, overall, don't look like they're small because they're so different than what we're used to. But we can take small step towards living in community. And so what is one step that you can take this week to begin to become part of this community, to get to know people in a way that when you're going through stuff, good or bad, you have somebody with you to walk that journey with you. And so maybe, maybe this week, maybe after the service, you go and say hi to somebody you've never said hi to. Maybe, maybe that's the starting point because that's not something you do regularly. Maybe next week you come an hour early uh, or sorry, at, at 10 o'clock. I don't want to get uh, the coffee people up too early or they get mad at me, but uh, they got coffee. They'll be good. Um, <laughs> they're, they're there. So they're there an hour early. You want to come in? Yeah, perfect. You want to come in and meet somebody? Maybe that's where you start, getting to know somebody. Most of you, maybe, maybe I'm making an assumption, uh, Hope's Pantry is, 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 a, is a food bank type thing that that we've had going for over a a little over a year now and it's an incredible ministry where an incredible amount of people come into this church and and who are in need and and are able to utilize the food that is donated And, and and so you can be part of the community of staff that work together there's a lot of volunteers that that work together and even more volunteers that are needed to be able to 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 keep it going to to be able to move it forward and so but maybe as you're coming to, to unpack groceries or, and different things like that or work when the clients are coming in, maybe, maybe you're there and you're getting to know somebody as you talk to them, as you work together and do something really different. Make it a habit to step out of your comfort zone, to interact with somebody, to reach out every Sunday. That's, that's, I know that's hard. I get that. It's hard for me. Make it a habit to allow others to get to know you. To get to know the real you, the struggles, the battles, the ups, the downs. And one of the best ways to know and be known, I believe, is in a small community in life group. And so this week, I would like, in order to, to, to get you into life groups, I desperately want you in life groups but in order to get you in life groups, we need facilitators to do that. And that doesn't mean that you need to be an educated teacher that is, or preacher. It means that you have a desire to interact with people and facilitate something. This, this, this community of believers that get together. And so we're looking for facilitators. I, I would encourage you to pray for that. And consider coming to that training night next Monday. Two are better than one. Life is lived best with others. Don't go it alone. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you have not left us alone. (laughs) You've given us each other. 
And Father, I pray that you would take away those fears that we have of what will people think of me and that we would just be bold to reach out because we want to have someone pick us up, walk with us, comfort us. Father, thank you that you have taught us what it looks like to walk in community just briefly this morning. But Father, through your Holy Spirit, would you just impress it upon our hearts? We thank you for all these things and pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Lord bless you and enjoy your week.